love, and in particular, the experience of obsessive love could actually counter the pain response. So that study, I'll just briefly describe, it involved having people come into the laboratory and experience any one or a number of different painful stimuli, but they had selectively recruited subjects that were in new relationships for which there was a high degree of infatuation, so much so that the people couldn't stop thinking about or communicating with that new partner uh, up to 80% of their waking time, which is a lot. That constant obsessing about that partner was correlated with, it wasn't causal necessarily, but was correlated with the ability to sustain higher levels of pain than people who were in more typical non-obsessive uh, forms of love, long-standing relationships where there wasn't long uh, obsessive love, rather. And of course, in this study, there were a lot of good control groups. They included uh, distractor. They included people obsessing about other things, their pet, etc. They included um, other forms of love and attachment. But it does seem that certain patterns of thinking can allow us to buffer ourselves against the pain response. And that should not be surprising. Certain forms of thinking are associated with the release of particular neuromodulators, in particular dopamine. And dopamine, it may seem, is kind of the thing that underlies everything, but it's not. Dopamine is a molecule that's associated with novelty, expectation, motivation, and reward. We talked about this at the beginning of the episode. Well, dopamine is coursing throughout the brain at heightened levels and coursing throughout the body at heightened levels when we fall in love. This probably some, has some adaptive mechanism that ensured pair bonding between people or who knows, maybe it ensured not bonding to multiple people. Nobody really knows uh, how dopamine functions uh, in terms of pair bonding, but it is known that when people fall in love, new relationships create very high levels of dopamine and that's probably the mechanistic basis by which these people were able to buffer the pain response by thinking about their partner or this new relationship that they're in almost obsessively or obsessively. Now that raises a deeper question. We should always be asking, yeah, but how, how? Well, the dopamine system can have powerful effects on the inflammation system. And it doesn't do this through mysterious ways. It does this by interacting through the brainstem and some of the neurons that innervate the spleen and other areas of the body that deploy cells to go combat infection inflammation and pain and the ways in which dopamine can modulate pain and in this case this particular study transform our experience of pain maybe even into something that's pleasurable is not mysterious it's really through the activation of brainstem neurons that communicate with areas of our body that deploy things like immune cells so for instance we have neurons in our brainstem that can be modulated by the release of dopamine and those neurons in the brainstem control the release of immune cells from tissues like the spleen or organs like the spleen. And those immune cells can then go combat infection. We've heard before that when we're happy, we're better able to combat infection, deal with pain, deal with all sorts of things. It essentially makes us more resilient. And that's not because dopamine is some magic molecule. It's because dopamine affects particular circuits and tells in a very neurobiological way, in a biochemical way, tells those cells and circuits that conditions are good. Despite the fact that there's pain in the body, conditions are good, you're in love, or conditions are good, you want to be in this experience, or conditions are good, this is for a greater cause, that you're fighting or suffering for some larger purpose. So all of that has existed largely in the realm of psychology and even motivational literature and this kind of thing. But there's a real mechanistic basis for it. Dopamine is a molecule that can bind to receptor sites on these brain areas. Those brain areas can then modulate the organs and tissues of the body that can allow us to lean into challenge. And those challenges can be infection. It can be physical pain. It can be uh, long bouts of effort that are required of us. And I think uh, many people have described the feeling of being newly in love as a heightened level of energy, a capacity to do anything. I mean, the, con the whole concept of a muse is one in which some individual or some thing, either imagined or real, enters our life and we can use that as fuel. And that fuel is chemical fuel. And that chemical fuel is dopamine. And it really does allow for more resilience and can even transform the experience of pain or what would otherwise be pain into an experience of pleasure. 